out of breath. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the series where Marissa tries to lose a little bit of excess body fat. We'll see how that's going in a few weeks. Today, I want to take you through a full day of eating on a cut, share some tips and tricks that I have with you for macro counting and for fat loss in general. These are things that I've learned over time, especially working with clients. They're really easy things to just add in that can make like a world of difference when it comes to trying to lose fat or just generally tracking macros. Also, I realized that I kickstarted this series with my last video, but I didn't give you, I, I filmed a body update. I didn't give it to you. So I figured I should give it to you like at the beginning of this journey so that you know that it's like the beginning of the journey. So I'll show you guys that at the end of this video, but right now I'm very, very hungry. So I'd like to go make some breakfast, but first I wanna quickly touch on that little mini workout that I just did, cause I will be doing that two more times today. And that is part of my plan for how I want to train while in this cut, at least for now. We'll see how it goes. My current exercise plan is three bigger workouts per week, bigger as in like heavier workouts where I do exercises that I know I can only do four to 12 reps of, so training mostly for strength and hypertrophy, and then three easier workouts spread out throughout the day. So basically workouts like you just saw with resistance bands, doing exercises that I know I could probably do 20 to 30 reps of if I really had to, but I'm capping the exercises at like 15 to max 20 reps, depending on what the exercise is, just to get the blood flowing to the muscles, get a little bit of a pump, enough to like stimulate that muscle building signal a little bit, but not enough to cause the damage that heavier workouts cause to the muscles. So that's the plan for now. It may change, we'll see, I don't really know, I'm kind of it. I'm just trying to get back into some sort of exercise routine that is focusing more on like actual strength and muscle building than I was before I started going back to the gym right before the gym's closed. But anyway, I am hungry because I'm in a deficit, but also because I haven't eaten yet today. So let's go make a little breakfast. I'm actually very excited for what I have planned for breakfast today because I realized the other day that I still have a gluten-free bagel that I got from the farmer's market the other day. So we're gonna make some sort of like egg bacon bagel sandwich thing. a gluten-free bagel that I got from the farmer's market. One half is topped with guacamole, the other half is topped with cashew cheese, and we have scrambled eggs with some kale and zucchini, and then topped with bacon. As far as fat loss meals go, I think this is pretty good. I am out on a walk. I've been trying to break up my walks into smaller chunks throughout the day just so I can stay more active throughout the day. And I'm about to start listening to an audiobook that I am almost done with. As you guys know, audiobooks are my way of staying connected to and excited about and interested in and educated about health and fitness and also up to date with any new research that comes out and all of that. And so since the quarantine, because before I was listening to audiobooks when I would walk, but also when I would drive. Really no place to drive right now. Therefore my driving time is um, very, very small. Therefore my audiobook listening time has been cut down quite significantly. So I'm actually using this as motivation to walk just like a little bit more throughout the day so that I have more time to listen to audiobooks and stay educated and updated. Listening to audiobooks is one of the things that helps me really feel like I can give you guys quality content, make sure that I'm giving my clients the most up-to-date information and just expand my knowledge base that I can contribute to my clients. So this is like is super important for me. The book that I'm listening to right now has been a little bit different from my normal books that I would listen to, but I still definitely recommend it. It's called Hardwiring Happiness, and it's just way more on the wellness end of the spectrum compared to like the fitness and nutrition stuff that I usually listen to. But I decided to listen to it because this whole situation has created such a sense of negativity, like a pervasive negativity. And even though in the last year I have worked so hard on embracing positivity and seeing the positive in the negative and everything like that, it's still taking its toll on me because it's creating 
an underlying stress. So I wanted a book that would kind of help change my mindset a little bit and cope with it a little better. And I definitely think that this audiobook has the power to help everyone through this situation. The premise of it is that evolutionarily we're all hardwired to remember and internalize negative things a lot more because evolutionarily like it was more important to remember those kinds of things. Like if your brother got killed by a lion while picking berries in the berry field to the west, you'd want to remember that because you don't want to get killed by a lion. And remembering positive things is just less important when it comes to pure survival. So the audiobook goes into how we can use neuroplasticity to our advantage to basically rewire our brains so that we can internalize positive experiences a lot better and have them more thoroughly permeate our experience of life so that we're not overwhelmed by all of the negativity that it's so easy to become overwhelmed by. And it outlines a four step process that you can go through really, really easily to start making that shift in your brain wiring to help you, I don't wanna say become a more positive person, but help you experience the positive things in life more thoroughly and have them stick with you longer so that you aren't overwhelmed by the negativity. So it's a fascinating audiobook, highly recommend it. It's called Hardwiring Happiness. And as always, this book recommendation is brought to you by Audible, my favorite audiobook listening platform where I get all of the audiobooks that help me stay educated and up to date on all things health, fitness, wellness, etc. And if you want to check it out, you can go to audible.com slash Marissa or text Marissa to 500-500. You will get a 30 day free trial, one free audiobook credit, which you can use to listen to Hardwiring Happiness or any other audiobook that you so choose. You also get two free Audible originals. So take advantage of that. It's a great deal. Audible.com slash Marissa or text Marissa to 500 500. I'll link it down in the doobly do. And with that, I'm actually gonna finish the last few minutes of the book that I haven't listened to yet. I just did my second round of exercises for the day. As you can see, it's literally like four to five minutes total and it's not super intense exercise. So this isn't like I'm exercising three times a day or anything like that. It's a total of like 15 minutes tops of mild intensity exercise. It's now time for lunch. I just have some leftovers. It's roasted acorn squash stuffed with some ground beef that has kale and onion in it. I've just been obsessed with roasted squash lately. I don't know why. But, but it's, it's so good. good. So while I'm eating, I figured I would walk you guys through my weight loss and macro tracking hacks that I have for you guys today. Number one is for macro tracking. If there's anything that you consume every single day that you don't want to give up, that you just want to be a part of your life, log that in your macros like before you start the day. Don't get halfway through your day and realize, oh God, I don't have room for this one thing that I really value having in my daily diet. That's one of the great things about macro tracking is you can be super flexible and if there's something you wanna have in your diet, then you can make sure it's part of your diet. Obviously, I don't recommend making a giant plate of donuts part of your diet every single day, but for me personally, this is why I'm bringing this up, is every day, pretty much every day, I wanna have a kombucha and like, this much chocolate. So every day when I start tracking, I log a kombucha and this much chocolate. So that way I know how much space I have for everything else to play around with for the rest of the day. And it just makes organizing it a lot easier. Especially because I know that if I got to the end of the day and I didn't have space for chocolate, I would be very, very sad. So I make the space. I put it in there and then I move on and do everything else that I need to do. But speaking of macro tracking, my next hack is something that I actually talked about in my last video and I kind of demonstrated how I apply it to my current macro tracking and that is aiming for a weekly average rather than a daily set number. I use a spreadsheet for this so I created a spreadsheet I'll leave it in the description if you want to download it 
but basically you just input your macros every day for the week and then it averages it out and it lets you compare it to your goal macros. And not only is it great because IFIM, like tracking your macros is supposed to be flexible dieting, but if you're trying to hit the same thing every single day, it starts to feel not super flexible like especially compared to intuitive eating. But if you're aiming for a weekly average, you can see how much more flexible you can be and still hit your exact macros for the week. Every client that I've used this with has been mind blown by how much wiggle room you actually have when things are averaged out over seven days. It allows you the flexibility to go out with friends one night or if you're feeling less hungry to actually eat less. It gives you a lot more freedom within macro tracking. So if you're someone who starts to get obsessed with the numbers, if you're tracking day to day, but you want to try to, you know, hit goals regularly, highly recommend trying to do weekly. Obviously, if you become obsessive with that, like don't do that, but it's definitely a great stepping stone that allows you to be much more flexible, but still precise, if that makes sense. Then this next tip is less macro tracking, more just general fat loss. And honestly general health because i think you should do this at all times regardless of whether or not you're trying to lose fat but it makes fat loss easier and that is for every meal focus on having a protein and a vegetable and try to make like 80 to 90 percent of every time you sit down something on your plate is a protein and something is a vegetable and for fat loss this really comes in handy because it majorly cuts down on snacking because so many snacks are kind of empty calories so if you're forcing yourself to have a protein and a vegetable you not only kind of cut back on those kind of foods, but you also really force yourself to only eat when you're actually hungry. Because usually when you're just craving food, you're not craving chicken or ground beef or butternut squash. You are craving foods that are less nutritionally dense. So if you're saying to yourself, oh, I'm really hungry, I wanna eat something, but I definitely don't want protein or vegetables, then you're probably not that hungry. Additionally, protein and fibrous vegetables are some of the most filling foods and satiating foods. So they really help manage hunger when you are trying to actively be in a deficit. And then also they're just generally good for you. Like good quality sources of protein and vegetables are some of the most micronutriently dense foods on the planet, which is why I think pretty much everyone should always aim to have protein and vegetables with every single meal. Cause like it's, just, it's good for you. And then going back to macro tracking something that is incredibly helpful just as far as saving time goes is to cook in bulk and then divide the food divide the calories and you're set i don't know about other apps but in my fitness pal at least you can log a recipe and then log the number of servings so like this was clearly one squash and then it was originally one pound of ground beef so i could like log everything with all the oils and all of that and then just divide it into two. Basically, it saves you a lot of time because this is basically meal prepping, but it also saves you the time of having to log everything individually every time you eat. I don't know about you, but that is the most annoying part of macro tracking for me. I have a super solid relationship with food. Tracking my macros does not make me like see food as bad, does not make me feel restricted, anything like that. It's just an educational tool for me, but I hate the time consumingness of inputting every little thing into the app. It's just annoying and it takes forever. And if there's one thing that's gonna stop me from tracking macros for a day, it's gonna be that. So if that's something that is holding you back or that is just making it more difficult for you, it's so much easier to like cook, four servings of your favorite paleo chili recipe, log the full recipe in my fitness pal, divide it into like four separate containers, freeze two of them, and then you have the macros for those meals for the next four days. This is not really a secret strategy. It's just one that I am trying to get more into because as I said, I hate, hate logging, logging things, things individually. individually. And then this last one is not really nutrition or macro tracking related, but it is fat loss related or just also general health. Honestly, most of my tips for fat loss are tips that are good for general health because you really shouldn't be doing much for fat loss. That would be bad for your general health. But anyway, the tip is to set an alarm on your phone or multiple alarms on your phone that will go off every hour to three hours throughout the day to tell you to just get up and move especially when you're in a deficit it can become so much easier to be less active because you have less energy and so your body naturally 
holds you more still. You fidget less, you're less likely to get up and go get something if you need something. Like you just become less likely to move around. And so if you have that reminder to get up and move throughout the day, it helps you burn those calories that you normally would if you were eating your normal amount, but it also keeps you from being sedentary, which sedentary lifestyle is not good for anyone. Regardless of whether you're trying to lose fat, build muscle, just be happy and healthy, etc. What you can do is, you know, set alarm for when you get up, do something, and then two hours later, two hours later, two hours later, two whatever, and then every time your alarm goes off, just do like half of what I've been doing. Do like 20 body weight squats, couple incline push-ups, and then a handstand for a minute if you can do a handstand or something like that just to get your body moving, get the blood flowing, get yourself up out of your chair so that you are staying active throughout the day. Hi, Ernie. So I have just a few last things to finish up for work, but the sun's gonna set in like 20 minutes, so I'm gonna go for a walk and finish them up a while. I get some movement in. I wish I could take Ernie with me. He needs a leash so I can take him on a walk. All right, my work is done for the night, which means it's time for one more quick round of exercises and then dinner. Suck me up small, breathe me in and let me go. Filling the lungs inside. Officially dinner time. I just have some steak with some roasted veggies. We got cauliflower, carrots, and broccolini. You'll notice I'm following my own tip with having a protein and vegetable for the meal. I mean, that's literally all I have for this meal, but following my rule of protein and vegetables. So I'm gonna eat this because I'll wrap this video up, but I did promise you my start of cut body update. So, here you go. Here's what my physique is currently looking like. Ernie's literally the best cat. He is my favorite. like now that I've gained a wee bit of fat. As I said in my previous video, I do not dislike my body right now. Like I'm not unhappy with it whatsoever. I just want to change it a little bit, which is fine. And if you want to follow me on this journey of fat loss, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post new videos. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up because it really does support me. I really appreciate it. Share it with your friends, your family, stick it on Facebook, whatever. I just lost my cauliflower. If you have any questions about fat loss, losing fat at home, building muscle at home, literally any questions about health and fitness whatsoever, leave them in the comments below. I can try to address them in a future video and I will see you very soon. Bye.